Optimizing life is made possible through the support of Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield, working to improve lives and communities across Indiana since 1944. One America. Hoosier Village. The Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis. And Donald Denoon. How is your health? Could it be better? I couldn't take garbage, garbage out to the curb without having chest pain and shortness of breath. I did the heart catheterization test on you, and, and I thought, we've we got to be serious here. We've got to do something. And Americans spend over $3 trillion on health care each year, primarily to manage chronic conditions, such as diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. I'm not 43 years old at this point. You know, who would think that it's a heart attack? Are these conditions our destiny, or can they be turned around? A growing movement in healthcare believes we can make fundamental changes just by changing our habits, what we eat, how much we exercise, and how well we deal with life's ups and downs. And it wasn't long before I realized that most of the things that I was operating on were actually preventable. It's called lifestyle medicine. Healthcare organizations, hospitals, and corporations are now adopting its principles in increasing numbers. What's so exciting now is that we know that chronic disease can be reversed. So it isn't just about prevention, but we can reverse existing heart disease, diabetes, other chronic diseases, and that is, that's really exciting. Meet individuals who have turned their lives around as well as the pioneers in this movement in optimizing life. Over half of adults in the United States have a chronic disease, things like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, and cancer. And 40% have two or more. These conditions also put people at higher risk for bad outcomes during the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. Former South Bend paramedic Dave Foster has type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Over just a few years, his heart disease spiraled out of control. Chest pain, a heart attack, stents, and bypass surgery. Uh, next thing I know, we're back in the room, and uh, he's saying, uh, you need a heart transplant. It's like, really? No, oh, okay. It was terrifying. It, it was, we had just adopted Shelby. She was just a few months old. We were looking at, at Dave being my Mr. Mom, you know, hopefully staying home with, with Shelby and hearing that he needed a heart transplant. Was, it was like the bottom dropped out of your world. I think the first cardiology visit that we had was in 2008. Wow. Then we did some more work uh, in about 2013. You had to have the bypass surgery and but then I think it was 2015 when things got hairy. Yeah, July uh, 15th. That's when I referred you down to um, Indiana University uh, for an evaluation for a heart transplant. At the same time Foster was being evaluated for a transplant, Beacon Health in South Bend became a provider of a lifestyle medicine initiative called the Ornish Heart Disease Reversal Program. We found that four key elements are important in reversing not only heart disease, but most chronic diseases. What we eat, which is essentially a whole foods plant-based diet that's low in fat and sugar, moderate exercise, like walking a half an hour a day, various stress management techniques, including meditation and yoga-based stretching, and what we call social support, which is really love and intimacy, or support groups. There was a fight to get me into the program. They didn't really think I was going to make it through the program. I was so bad. Foster's heart function had deteriorated to about 40 percent. Dr. Ornish, you know, graduated from medical school a little bit before I did. His research and, and work went into the nutrition uh, route, and we're so glad it did because it, it made a tremendous difference. And he was able to prove to Medicare that uh, that his program could reverse heart disease, N not just make it better, but actually reverse it. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid approved Ornish's lifestyle management program for intensive cardiac rehabilitation in 2010, and it's been adopted at several sites across the country. Although some practitioners advocating similar lifestyle changes and healthier eating have questioned the necessity for Ornish's strict, meat-free, very low-fat diet, the results were dramatic for Dave Foster. 
within eight weeks by the time I got down to Indianapolis to see the uh, cardiologist down there, my heart function had improved from 42 to 55, just within eight weeks. But this was the case where I had a guy who was very sick and very symptomatic, um, and the Ornish program worked actually very, very quickly to really stabilize uh, your symptoms, and, um, and uh, I was able to breathe a little easier. So it isn't just about prevention, but we can reverse existing heart disease, diabetes, other chronic diseases, and that is, that's really exciting. We know that 80% of uh, chronic disease can be prevented, better managed, and in many cases reversed by lifestyle uh, choices. And so we have uh, started the transformation of our primary care practice into one that focuses on helping individuals make the right choices. I had tried so many fad diets and so many different things, I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and try it. It doesn't hurt. I'm going to go ahead and just do it. Eskenazi Health's Lifestyle Medicine Program brings physicians, nutritionists, mental health professionals, and physical activity coaches together in the same place to make it as easy as possible and to save time and travel for patients. I met with the physician, Lisa, and um, she went over my lab values and asked me what I hoped to get out of the program, what my goals were, that, and then we all met as a group it's a safe place to be able to talk about uh, your weight loss journey, um, the things that have been triggers for you to eat, or just safe a place to talk about anything. Yeah, the patients are in the driver's seat, you know, they're, and they're, we're, the whole team is working with them. But we, we really put them in the position of uh, making the choices and that we are going to, to support them. Adopting healthier lifestyles and managing chronic diseases often results in people needing less medication. And I've been to diabetic education um, through a lot of different hospital mm -hmm. systems and never heard mm -hmm. things described in that way because she's not looking at it from how can I medicate you, yeah. but how can I help you change your lifestyle so that you can live on you know as little medication as you need. I do have type 2 diabetes and it helped me manage uh, some lifestyle changes for myself. Uh, it allowed me to bring my hemoglobin A1C down. The hemoglobin A1C test is used to diagnose and monitor how well diabetes is being managed. A normal A1C level is below 5.7. I had been in the sevens and I actually made it in the sixes, so which is quite an accomplishment. Like many Americans, Carl Karch was unaware his lifestyle choices were damaging his health. Before I had my heart attack, um, I was a police officer, and since I wasn't overweight or real obesely overweight, I, uh, I thought I was relatively healthy. So I pretty much ate whatever I wanted to eat. Away from work, Karch's favorite pastime was grilling and drinking craft beer. We're having a cookout, and um, while we're there, I felt this weird pain in my back. I'm standing there moving oddly, trying to stretch it. I'm not saying anything to anybody because it's just, I don't know, a little weird pain. Karch drove home, but his symptoms got worse. Now I start feeling a little tingling in my arms. Karch's relatives discovered him on the floor. And they're like, what's going on? I'm like, it hurts, and my arms are tingling. He was taken to the emergency room. When that ER doctor said, you're having a heart attack, it hit me. I think I started crying, and um, um, it, uh, it but I have three daughters, and I'm thinking, oh, crap, I won't see them again. And the next thing I remember is waking up, and my three daughters were there. They're bawling their eyes out. I get a call from a lady, we want to talk to you about cardiac rehab. 
and um, she mentioned cardiac rehab, what it was, and then she's like, oh, and then there's this other program that's like an intense cardiac rehab, and studies have shown that it this this could reverse heart disease, and I said, yep, sign me up. While the first lifestyle medicine clinical trials happened over 30 years ago, they're not as prevalent as other kinds of studies. Dr. William Krauss, president of the American College of Sports Medicine, who researches the benefits of exercise for people with chronic diseases, says that's partly because they're costly. You're studying people very intensively and giving them a lot of um, encouragement and advice, and that takes a lot of staff time. And the fact of the matter is that uh, reviewers at a national level are just not focused on lifestyle. They, they tend to be focused on other um, investigations. Other investigations like new prescription drugs with the potential to make a lot of money. And so as we raise the boat of how important this is and how much effect it is, I'm hoping that we'll be able to get more funding for studies like this. Though not always labeled lifestyle medicine, most hospitals and medical organizations provide programs to help people make healthier choices. But it's not always easy for people to get to a clinic for a program. In fact, for people living in poor neighborhoods, even access to grocery stores and fresh produce is difficult. These are known as food deserts. My name is Sharana Moore. I am the garden manager and founder of Lawrence Community Gardens. To make our community garden a reality, Moore needed access to some land. One of the thriving businesses in her food desert neighborhood with ample unused acres was Indiana's largest beer and wine distributor. I wrote Phil Terry, who's the uh, CEO of Monarch Beverage, a letter, and then I followed up with a phone call. And they were all in. Just as the pieces were falling into place for the garden, Moore literally had a rude awakening. When I woke up, I had this, uh, this incredible pressure on my chest. And it felt like there was wood or bricks just on my chest. It was, felt like it was heavy. Frightened, Moore called her husband and took a shower to see if she would feel better. I couldn't catch my breath. I was vomiting at the same time. I was um, sweating and the shower didn't help. And I, I called my husband again and I said, I'm not gonna live till you get here. I'm gonna be dead when you get here. I feel like my life is slipping away. Still, I'm still not thinking that it's a heart, it's a heart attack. You know, I'm at 43 years old at this point. You know, who would think that it's a heart attack? Moore made one more call to her friend Taisha Ahmad, who sent an ambulance. Paramedics found her collapsed at her front door. Taisha saved my life, you know. When my husband got there, I only seen him cry once, you know what I mean? And he was just crying and and all I could think about was the small children, you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do? I mean, I had a heart attack, you know? And they found out I had a 90% block and that and they put a stent in. And it was a wake up call for me that I needed to do better with my life, you know, and I needed to do better with my eating habits. So we started by showing that we could reverse the progression of even severe heart disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity. We then did the first randomized trial showing that these same lifestyle changes may slow, stop, and even reverse the progression of men with early stage prostate cancer, and by extension, in all likelihood, when with many types of early stage breast cancer. Dietitians like Leslie Muse work to help patients better understand the familiar yet frequently ignored physician advice to eat better. I try to get people to go on a whole food plant-based diet, which consists of eating fruits and vegetables, whole grains, plant-based sources of protein, which are going to be beans and lentils, nuts and seeds, and then to stay away from refined flour and sugar and oils. This diet 
can essentially, it can prevent and in some cases it can even reverse chronic conditions that we have in the United States, such as diabetes, heart disease, arthritis even, because it's an anti-inflammatory diet. When you're eating plant foods, you're getting all of the beneficial phytochemicals in those and the vitamins and the nutrients. Very little nutrition is taught in medical schools, leaving doctors without the knowledge to help patients or themselves. I was originally trained in general surgery, and it wasn't long before I realized that most of the things that I was operating on were actually preventable. Dr. Dexter Sherney took the phrase, physician heal thyself, seriously. Dr. Sherney came from a family history of obesity and was pre-diabetic himself. Everything that I'm doing now is really focused on lifestyle medicine because it has been such a life changer for me and for family members that have done this and a family that we have just been dropping like flies in our 40s and 50s, thinking that this was all because of our genes. What I really quickly came to learn is that the reason it ran in our family is because we were all eating the same way and, and, and at night exercising in the same way. And when we changed that, then these diseases changed just as quickly. Sherney was recruited by Indiana engine manufacturer Cummins Incorporated to explore how lifestyle medicine might improve employee health and safety in its factories, reducing health care costs. That was really my job, to start to change the culture, to build the Live Well Center, which is really probably the largest lifestyle medicine on-site clinic uh, in the United States. Cummins knew in order to see a change in health care uh, outcomes as well as reduce costs um, for not only the employer but also the consumer of those services, we had to get away from just having people go in, getting their symptoms addressed, they go back out with a medication and they come back a month later with the same issue and we just do the whole cycle over again. We really wanted to focus on what are the behaviors that are leading you to keep getting this condition over and over again? What are the behaviors that are leading people to have diabetes? How can we talk to people so they can start to reverse those things, get off those medications, lose the weight, have a lower A1Cs? When I was at Vanderbilt University, I, I ran a, a study on this, and we actually published uh, our results. It was on type 2 diabetics. We wanted to see what kind of uh, outcomes we could get and would there be actually a return on our investment? And indeed there was, and we saw the return on investment within six months. Peppers and carrots first, and the bok choy kind of second, but if yours is all mixed together, don't worry, you can't mess it up. Okay, you're ready to go. I have the best job in the whole place. Um, I am the chef and culinary program manager. I'm also a health coach, so we have a large variety of programs here. Um, and I like to say we're the practical piece of nutrition. So if a dietitian gives some advice or the physician gives some advice to change the way a patient um, needs to eat, they come here and I help them figure out how to do that. I've been with Cummins a little under two years, uh, and I think the Global Center is a great asset. Uh, it's basically like a, a college infirmary where you can come and do pretty much anything from an x-ray to a dermatologist. Uh, along that is also the meal prep classes, which is a great option to have some heart-healthy, plant-based meals at a very affordable price. Uh, right now we are doing 10 meals for $40, and it will take us under an hour and a half. I don't have to do any of my dishes. I come in, I create some heart-healthy meals. They're always good to go. With degrees in biology and nutrition, Muse says it's a common misbelief that heart-healthy plant-based meals can provide enough protein. You can easily meet your protein needs, and then you have to realize that all of the plant materials, even vegetables, uh, peas, beans, leafy greens, they all are still going to contain protein in them. So it's not difficult to get in the amount of protein that you need. 
because I will meet people at the grocery store and we will actually go around and we will pick up the products and look at the labels and see what's in there. I would say cheese is probably the hardest thing for most of my clients to give up when we talk about that. And so usually what I will try to get them to do is to make cheese more of a condiment. While diet is a cornerstone of lifestyle medicine, it's more than just about improving nutrition. Researchers like Krauss are studying the impacts of exercise on health. So for glucose control, it turns out that moderate intensity exercise is way more beneficial than vigorous intensity exercise. Krauss says that's encouraging news for people with prediabetes and diabetes. 80% of the glucose that's consumed actually goes into our skeletal muscle. People with diabetes or prediabetes have a defect in that uh, mechanism, and that's why their glucoses tend to run high. So if you go out and exercise, you become more insulin responsive, and you tend to control your glucose levels better. Well, it's not just leisurely walking your dog. Actually, it's uh, walking intentionally uh, at about uh, three miles per hour. It's important for patients to consult with a health care provider prior to lifestyle diet and exercise changes, especially those with pre-existing conditions. The American College of Sports Medicine is working with clinicians, encouraging them to write their patients prescriptions for exercise. Physicians don't have a lot of time to do that kind of counseling in the clinic, and it tends not to be as effective as it could be. So if we could get insurance companies to pay for an ancillary provider that the physician can hand off to at the end of the clinic visit, that would be very effective. We did an hour of exercise in the morning and we did some treadmill work, some rowing machine work, some recumbent bike work, and then we would go in and do our yoga and meditation. That's stress relief. Karch had gone through a painful divorce, and though the marriage had ended, the stress did not. He needed help learning to share his feelings and cope, and surprisingly found it where he resisted it the most, group therapy. I thought, mm, I'm not going to talk. N not to be obstinate, but I just, I don't talk to strangers, especially about my feelings. And he made it very warm and showed the benefits of it. The real epidemic in our culture is really depression. You know, more prescriptions are written for uh, antidepressants than just about anything else. And it's why we see an opioid epidemic or why people smoke or overeat or drink too much or work too hard or play too many video games as a way of distancing themselves from their own emotional pain. Like I said, I started talking and talked a lot, cried, you know. And I shared a lot, and I listened, I learned, I think I even improved my listening skills. I'm a much better listener, and I am very, um, I think the word is empathetic, or I empathize with people. Mm -hmm. And I realize how important that is because I needed it, and I found the value in it, and so I was able to do that with others. Karch feels he has a new lease on life. He's running half marathons, getting certified in yoga instruction, and is steadfast in his adherence to his healthy diet. He's only sorry it took the crisis of a heart attack to open his eyes to feeling better. You know, if you want to start in your 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s, it's never too late to start, but the earlier the better, of course. Um, so I would suggest it to everybody. It's not just chronic diseases improving, the impact is even deeper. We found that when you change your lifestyle, it changes your genes, over 500 genes in just three months, turning on the genes that keep you healthy and downregulating or turning off the genes that cause these, these chronic diseases. Making even small changes can add up. A lot of times, if I have a very busy night at work or a very hectic night at work, I won't eat for a long stretch, but then I'll like binge eat at the end of my shift to stop at fast food or something like that. So I learned to take little snacks with me, something that I could just eat very quickly on the go that keeps me from being so hungry. I do still eat meat and I try to eat the lean meat and the fish, but um, I found that with the plant-based diet, I feel much better. 
And um, when I feel physically much better, mentally I feel better too. Dr. Sherney says adopting healthier lifestyle habits isn't all or nothing, black and white. You meet people where they are and then give them these baby steps that they can take in that direction and it all starts to work together, right? So maybe they're eating a little few more blueberries, they're standing up more, maybe they get a few more minutes of sleep or better quality sleep. That all works together to improve that person's performance, but it's because you met them where they were and you weren't trying to beat them up saying, oh, you got to run 60 minutes a day and all this, you know, and go completely vegan or something. No. Just these little tiny things uh, can start to make a difference. All of this is an evolution, and this work has played out over decades. And what's exciting now is to see it really, the momentum really building, and we've got a critical mass, and, I, and you, you can see this really becoming mainstream. Prior to the coronavirus pandemic, physician burnout was at record levels. Though anecdotal, these doctors are reporting personal benefits from practicing lifestyle medicine. If you believe in evidence-based practice, you believe that if you do these things, they, you, know, you will achieve the, the results. Uh, it is gratifying to see patients seeing themselves succeed when time and time again in the past they failed is incredibly rewarding. Lifestyle medicine is a breath of fresh air because it's what we all came into medicine to do and that's to heal people to heal the mind, body, and soul. And lifestyle really does that. It's nice to know that there's a program out there like this you know, that would actually reverse that plaque in your arteries. For Dave Foster, a retired paramedic, the prospect of his heart health worsening while he waited on the heart transplant list was terrifying. He'd watch patients become very frail and ill while waiting for a donor organ. Glad I thank Dr. Uh, Ornish few weeks ago, I thanked him for giving me the last three years of a normal life. You know, I wasn't running back and forth to the emergency room. I wasn't on a machine keeping me alive. And for Sharana Moore, the lifestyle changes brought about by her garden are not only helping her, but her family and community. Sometimes it does take a tragedy to move people to action. And I want to get our people more into healthier and wellness without having tragedy. The garden is really important to my life um, and it's important to my family, uh, my children and my husband. It's just a time that we get together as family and we work together and we pick our produce that we eat here at the house. So my medicine has grown there now. <laughs> Optimizing life is made possible through the support of Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield, working to improve lives and communities across Indiana since 1944. One America. Hoosier Village. The Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis. And Donald Danoon.